Hi and welcome to this video. In this video we're going to take a look at this and you're probably wondering what's inside it. Well it's the Grandstream GCC 6011 not the 6010 but the 6011 all-in-one convergence device. Now this is the big brother of the Grandstream GCC 6010. So what we'll do is take a look and we'll go through the specs. So we'll get on to that right now. So here we are with the Grandstream GCC 6011, which as I said, is the big brother of the GCC 6010 all-in-one convergence device. Take a look inside the box, and as usual, they come in the usual brown packaging box, which can be recycled. And just as a disclaimer, I purchased this device with my own money. There's been no interaction with Grandstream about me producing this video at all. This is my all own opinion. And the only thing when I had the interaction with Grandstream was when I purchased the device from their local UK distributor. Now this device is priced at about £200 sterling here in the UK. So if you want to know the price in your own currency, just do the conversion from about £200. Now we'll carry on and in the box we get the usual quick installation guide, which is for the GCC 6010 and the GCC 6011. Now there are some differences in the guide, but it will actually tell you which differences are for which model. So we'll put that to one side. And inside the box, at the right hand side, we have, with this device, you can actually rack mount it. So here we have a set of rack mount brackets. Now they are extended brackets, as you will see, because the device is a little bit shorter. It's not the standard device to fit in 19 inch rack. However, that's why they've provided the extended rack mount ears or brackets, whichever you like to call them. And as you can see, these are longer so that they will fit in a standard 19 inch rack. Now you also get the power supply. Now this is a UK power supply with this and it's an adapter with the pins on it. So there's no external power brick apart from the one you've this one, which you plug into the wall. There's also a earthing cable, and there's also a set of rubber feet, should you wish to mount it on a shelf instead of a rack mount. And that's it for that side of the box. So we have then the Grandstream GCC 6011, and you will also get a little label with it, which has barcode and which also contains the device MAC address and also the factory default password. Now, as I've said before, the factory default passwords are all different for each Grandstream device. However, the username, which is admin, is standard for all or most Grandstream devices. So here we have the GCC 6011, which is an all-in-one convergence device and which is the big brother of the GCC 6010. Now here we have four PoE out ports. Now these can supply a maximum PoE budget of all four ports of 36 watts, which is not a great deal I know, but there's only four PoE out ports. So that should be enough for supplying PoE and the PoE standard for this is 802.3 AF and AT which is PoE and also PoE plus. Now as you can see we've got eight LAN ports so there are eight LAN ports whereas on the other model there are fewer LAN ports. There's also an SFP port which can supply up to a maximum speed of 2.5 gigabits per second. Then we have port 10, 11 and 12, which are all three of those is WAN ports. So they are all fixed WAN ports and I believe they cannot be reconfigured to be LAN ports. So with this, you get eight RJ45 LAN ports, one SFP port, which is rated at either one gigabits per second or 2.5 gigabits per second. Then we have two RJ45 one ports and then also an SFP one port, which is also rated at either one gigabits per second or 2.5 gigabits per second. 
Then moving across, we have a micro SD card, which is for storing, for example, backup files or, for example, voicemail files, as this is a PBX device as well. And there's also then a USB 3 port. Then we have a status LED and also a reset, which is recessed into a hole there. Looking at the bottom of the device, we also have an M2 SSD card slot. So this can also be used to store backups and voicemail files and so on. Now this is passively cooled, so it's silent in operation. There's no fans inside, but there are grills on either end to allow for airflow. Looking at the back of the device, we have the 48 volt power supply in. We also have a cable clip there to stop the uh, power cable being pulled out. And then we also have the Grandstream label at the back, again with the serial number, MAC address and also the factory default password. Then at the right hand side there's the earthing terminal. So that's how the Grandstream GCC 6011 all-in-one convergence device looks like. Now for the specs, this can have, as I've said, there's two 2.5 gigabit SFP ports and 10 gigabit Ethernet ports and three of these are fixed WAN ports. Now it does actually state WAN there and LAN there so you know which ports are which. So you could actually connect three ISP connections to this and have them as uh, backup WAN connections. Now, as I said, there's a micro SD card slot, there's USB 3 port and there's also the reset button there. Now this has two gigabytes of RAM, 32 gigabytes of eMMC flash storage inside and it also has a optional M2 SSD card slot underneath. Now for the routing it can route up to 2.5 gigabits per second. The IPsec VPN throughput is 1 gigabits per second and it can support 160,000 NAT sessions. The IDS and IPS throughput is 900 megabits per second and it can have for the PBX inside, which has a PBX inside this box as well as a router, and it can support out of the box 12 users and 4 concurrent calls by default. So that's all included in the price of this. You don't have to pay for any license for the PBX unless you wish to upgrade it at all to more users and more concurrent calls, then you would pay a one-off upgrade fee, should you so wish. As I've said, there's four PoE outports at the front, and they are IEEE 802.3 AF and AT, and the maximum rated PoE wattage is 36 watts for those four ports. This can be desktop, wall or rack mounted. It's a metal casing and there's 12 single LEDs and four PoE LEDs and one RGB LED here, which is for device status. Now it can support for the connection of the WAN, DHCP, static IP and PPPoE. The network protocols is IPv4, IPv6, IEEE 802.1Q, IEEE 802.1P and 802.1X, 802.3, 802.3U and IEEE 802.3AB. For the quality of service, it can support VLAN, TOS, it supports multiple traffic classes, filter by port, IP address, DSCP. It can also support app QoS, application protocol monitoring and traffic statistics. For the firewall, it has a comprehensive firewall installed, which is an enterprise grade firewall. And the firewall supports DDNS, port forwarding, UPnP, DOS and spoofing defense, as well as traffic rules, NAT, DPI, antivirus, IPS, IDS, and also an SSL proxy as well. So it supports SSL encryption with the SSL proxy. Content control, DNS filtering, 
Web URL, Class, Keywords, Filtering, Application, Identification and Control. It also can support VPNs and the protocols for these are IPsec, PP, TP, L2, TP, OpenVPN and of course WireGuard. It has a inbuilt Grandstream device management system, so that's the GDMS via the local web GUI, SSH and also SNMP. However, you can control it from the cloud if you wish, and if you want to know about controlling it from the cloud, then go and see my setup video about GDMS in the cloud. However, as I said, this does have a built-in controller itself, so it can control access points on your network as well as the switches. It can support up to 150 access points and up to 500 clients via this built-in web control interface. The power supply with it is a universal one and it's rated at 100 to 240 volts AC, 50 to 60 hertz and the output is 48 volt DC at 1 amp and the maximum wattage is 48 watts for the power. The unit dimensions for this is 280 millimeters wide by 180 millimeters deep by 44 millimeters high. That's about it for this Grandstream GCC 6011. So that's it for this. And what I'm going to do is get it set up in my rack. And then, should I so wish, I might be doing a video on it. Although it's a similar setup to my other video, which is already on my channel, showing you the GCC 6010. However, this is probably just about the same as that. So whether I decide to do a, another video on it, um, I'm not quite sure yet, but if I do, just keep an eye out on the channel. Or if not, why not go and have a look at my other video where I show you the web interface for the GCC 6010. So thanks for watching this video. Hope you liked it and more videos coming again soon. Bye for now.